Let me take you into some of the districts. Oh, this is a site plan that shows the entirety of the project. What's, in, what's the most important thing about this is that the development along 3rd Street, this is reversed from the view you just saw, development along 3rd Street is fairly low scale. It's in context with the urban, uh, with the village scale of the existing city of Burbank, so it's only two to three stories along here, building up to perhaps three and four over at this corner, adjacent to the high school. The center of the site, this is a mid to high rise hotel, depending upon the room count. And then this is uh, an entertainment uh, esplanade, a festival marketplace that occurs at a waterfront. And this is the serious retail at that corner. So from 3rd and Magnolia, walk right into a two or three story anchor department store. Can the council see well enough? Because we can yeah. see okay. fine. Okay. I can move to the other side. No, Chris no, comes from a tremendous acting family. And when he sees a lot of people to this side, he <laughs> automatically <laughs> talks to the place of this crowd. <laughs> They're voting later Second over here. Weekend. They're voting later over here. I've got a couple of things just at the end, okay? Uh, this, uh, this just so shows the scale of the office complex and what we've got going here. Uh, There's a series of uh, campus spaces, little courtyards and things, and it leads into the, the Center Media District. I pull back from that. This is a piece of that California Canyon. Now it's all dotted with bridges and little bungalows and things. Joe will take you into all of this. It's delirious. But you imagine now you're working in your office downtown, you can pick up for lunch and walk into a, a sycamore-lined California canyon with water flowing through it. Um, this is uh, uh, an old western town. Uh, why, did it, why did the Golden Mall get its name? Because gold was discovered here, and there's now a movie set uh, of the gold rush town that was developed after it. These are all ordinary shops on the inside, but you can see uh, Jeffrey's got a movie shooting here right now. Uh, I don't know if there's enough trailers there. It must be a channel movie, okay? Um, this is a little piece of the Lost Cities of the back lot. This is the Fantasy Hotel. Something very wonderful happens in this hotel. This is the Waterfront District. So we have an esplanade, you look out across the water. There are a lot of key things that uh, normally occur at, 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 at beachfronts and waterfronts, but we've converted them, made them wonderful and magical in a Disney way. So there's the whole project, the whole site. One thing we didn't mention, which Joe will go into, is that the uh, the mythology we've created is that the Walt Disney Studios in Burbank kind of lost its uh, uh, unique reason for a back lot. As film became faster and lights became lighter, uh, we now don't have a back lot anymore. This was, as the mythology goes, the original back lot. We've now renovated. We are going to use it as a movie set. So if you have a New York street or this street or that street, not only will it be a street for retail shopping, but when we have a movie that's shooting, or MGM does, or anybody does, they will use the New York street or the this street or the that street. So the whole mythology of the entire project is back lot. And you know, Disney works in story. Uh, and in, in creating the story, that is the story that we wanted to create. So the local residents will know that they may not be able to go in one street this certain day because you're shooting on that street. Now, that won't happen that often, but when it does, it's very exciting. Anyway, sorry. You got anything left, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just dance. <laughs> I'd, li I'd like to introduce a, a colleague, Joe Rohde. He doesn't understand any of this, but I don't understand any of what he'll tell you about. I presume I'll have to use this microphone as well. Um, first thing I want to do is take this down here, because much of what I'm going to be showing you is uh, detailed shots of what goes on inside here. I want to be able to relate it back to the, over, the full size structures that you can understand what's going on here. As Michael told you, this is a kind of a back lot. Uh, the, the imaginative uh, structure, the store that we've tried to make up is that w there is a back lot here and we've moved stores into it so that as you walk up to a building that appears to be a French chateau, you walk under the door of the French chateau, there's a space there that's sort of nothing and there you're in a store. And that store could sell anything. It will, in fact, sell what it needs to sell to serve the community and to make commerce grow. Um, it's very important in the way uh, that we relate to this. You'll find as we get further and further into this that we get into, I suppose you have to admit, crazier and crazier ideas. Until finally we're at ideas that a person might say, I'm doubtful if I want that in my community. I, I have doubts about that. Um, I want to assure you 
that at every point where this project contacts the community, <coughs> it presents a face to the community that is very, very uh, friendly, very favorable, that welcomes in the pedestrian traffic and tries very hard not to interfere with the normal practice of life in the community. What we really want is for this to become a part of the community. As you go sort of deeper and deeper into it, ultimately to get to the part that is removed, I mean, it's a cliff on one side and pathways and all that on the other, you have to intend to get there. That's where the crazy stuff is, and that's where it stays. And if you don't want to go there, there's, you don't have to go there. Um, but if you do, there's some wonder, wonderful, wonderful things waiting for you up there. Now, this retail area, uh, which basically comprises this giant L here, this is where a great deal of the retail is centered. It's internationally themed, as Chris said, but that international theming is carried through in back lot sets. For example, here we have a New York street. This New York street is going to not only be expressed in architecture, but also there's lively people in this street. Not only are there shoppers there going about their daily business, walking through the doors of a New York street uh, facade into you know, who knows what, Robinson's, Harrods, I don't know what it's gonna be, something very exciting. Um, there are also characters um, carrying out roles in this street to bring it to life as if some sort of drama was going on. Inside, it's filled with shopping opportunities, and those shopping opportunities we're really hoping are going to be a wonderful place to walk around, a fun place to be, so much fun that, that we might go broke. You might come in here and sit on the floor and just watch people shop, and that's fun enough for you. Um, <laughs> I want to stress, a lot of times when people hear the word entertainment, they have in their mind girls with long legs doing kick steps and things like that. Entertainment fundamentally means that you enjoy what is happening. In this case, what is happening is shopping. But this shopping is enjoyable. Therefore, this shopping is entertainment. That philosophy <laughs> informs much of what we're trying to do here. There's uh, the high-powered, hard-hitting kind of entertainment that many people are used to in a theme park is greatly reduced here. What we're trying to do is create an environment where being there is entertainment. And you don't really need to go very much out of your way uh, to create that. Now, this uh, area that you're looking at here is basically this Galleria kind of space in here. Uh, it's going to have probably a European theme rather than an American theme, but that's not the only theme we're working with here. As well, I want to mention that the streets have clubs and, and dining and other things that we'll get to later. Uh, there's really not much more I need to say about this. Uh, there's a lot of specialty retail, a lot of finely developed interior uh, sets. Another one of the city streets that we want to touch on is something exotic, something that going shopping on this street might be a little bit of an adventure. In this case, we've taken uh, the Ginza from Tokyo and used it as a jumping off theme point. What this is, is a set of the Ginza built up against shopping buildings. And those shopping buildings don't have to be Japanese, but it sure would be neat if they were Japanese, because nobody else has one. Um, so it's conceivable that you could go shopping at Mitsukoshi, but they'll probably hate us for even mentioning it. Um, <laughs> because we don't, you know, we can't promise that right now. But the quality of being here would be an exciting, light-filled, vibrant atmosphere. Again, as night went on, we would try and develop opportunities to keep the street alive with exterior street vendors, possibly with food opportunities there, and as well as this sort of animated life, I don't mean animated creatures drawn on paper, but people full of life, wandering in the streets and keeping this place alive and very active so that it really does come to have the quality of the real Ginza in Tokyo, a place that very few people have the opportunity to visit. Up on the roof of that, isolated from the public flow down there, is what we call Club Heaven. Club Heaven is basically, we're trying to keep, you know, that sort of atmosphere in an area that is kind of a destination. So again, the club people who want to go to a club aren't necessarily bumping into the people who want to go strolling. Um, this keeps everyone satisfying their directives without interfering with each other. The same way the person who wants to buy a pair of wingtip shoes doesn't want to wade through a sea of mimes and violinists to do that. You want to just go get your shoes and go. You can do that. You don't need to confront the, the sphinx. Um, <laughs> there, there's not really a sphinx here. There could be. But, um, okay, one of the clubs uh, we're thinking of is a kind of calypso